There's no way for you to develop the lifestyle you want. There's no way to avoid the banks more easily. There's no way to worry about never borrowing money again or to paying off debt faster than having unimaginable amounts of revenue. What's up, Wealth Nation? We have some exciting things to share with you today talking about leverage your opportunity with banking. Now, we have none other than Mr. Matthew Fillmore of VIP Financial, where he's going to share a wealth of his knowledge that he's gained over the years when it comes to credit, when it comes to banks, when it comes to currency in general. Yes. So, Matthew, could you please do us the honor of introducing yourselves to our audience? Uh, you bet. Thanks so much, guys, for having me on the channel. Uh, honor to be here. Um, I couldn't help but notice two of the nicest smiles on the platform. If, if you guys aren't monetizing those, uh, you should be either that or your dentist should be. So, uh, very, very nice smiles I noticed first thing uh, on your channel. And I, I, yeah, my my channel is all about teaching about money too. So this is going to be a really fun conversation um, between us. And uh, we teach about primarily maximizing cash flow. So that's where my strengths are, and and perhaps some of the techniques that have benefited me will. Uh, will be useful to your audience too. Fantastic. Now, we were actually just sharing uh, before we went live on this this camera where we were just talking about how we so admire Matthew and everything that he's done with his own channel. Because as we were getting started on our YouTube journey, we were just really, really stunned with everything that he was doing and sharing. And we were just like, wow, we can do this too. <laughs> so if anything, Matthew, if you could just give us a little bit, give us a synopsis of how you even got into the industry and how you started started learning about banking and how you can start leveraging credit and things like that. All right, cool. So yeah, actually, it's sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy, actually, because um, I started very young. Um, I was 21 when I was first invited to be mentored in the wholesale residential mortgage industry mm -hmm. at the time, which was 2001. Uh, ish, we you know were going through a refinance boom at that time. Subprime lending was becoming really popular, um, and we had to find a way to separate ourselves from the massive um, competition that existed. I mean, everybody it seemed was in the industry. It required little to no credential to get in, and um, at that point, uh, we started to educate in person and start to provide just basic knowledge to our community. Some days we would get just a handful of people in the room. I remember many, many times speaking with one person who showed up, you know, you'd call and, and get 30 or 40 confirmations uh, of people promising to be there and, and you know, you'd have an empty room. And we, we did this for years and years um, where uh, ultimately we started to say, listen, it's gonna be a really important thing for us to, to sort of establish a reputation, if you will, for being um, industry experts on a specific subject. And the subject at the time when I was 22, 23 years old that was continually intriguing to me was credit. So we sought out mentors in that specific industry and came across one of the creators of the original FICO credit scoring model, uh, along with Edward Jameson, who at the time was uh, one of the most reputable uh, attorneys uh, uh, speaking on the subject of credit. And, and ultimately, we, we invested a great deal of money in, in an apprenticeship program that they were offering. It cost us $15,000 and 300 bucks a month. And that was a very, very difficult thing for me to do at that time because I was, um, I've was i always had this curse of the, the DIY DNA. You know? And so to have these mentors that I wasn't required to pay for who were helping me come up in the industry in the mortgage business, uh, now encouraging me to spend this kind of money to invest in, in mentors that charged. Um, that was a new thing for me. We went ahead and, and made the investment. Uh, we, we borrowed money in order to make the investment. Um, and by the time I was 25, I was considered one of the leading experts on the subject of credit scoring and, and had, you know, started to get invitations like this um, on, at one time it became over a hundred syndicated radio show shows per week, uh, and, uh, a whole handful of, uh, television appearances and so forth, where we could give out really powerful tips and tricks to help people supercharge their credit. Um, and that was back when it was really hard to find information about credit. It was like this, this mystery formula. 
Uh, today, things have changed a lot, but that really propel, propelled our, our, um, uh, you know, our, our experience as well as our knowledge, not just on the subject of, of what credit was and, and how to recover if, we, if you'd made mistakes in the past, but even further, how to utilize credit in a way where you could access capital and then use that capital to build cash flow. And that's how the three C's of proper banking and borrowing actually uh, de were developed. And it, it, it's tra you know, transformed everything about how I've done business. And we were able to share along the way our experiences with countless other people at this point um, who have managed to sort of connect the dots between the hybrid of uh, a Dave Ramsey who, who hates debt and a Robert Kiyosaki who, who really teaches about other people's money and, and leveraging your way to wealth. And, and uh, we went on to do that on stages around the country for somewhere around um, 13, 14 years. Um, at that point, we were um, getting to a stage where we were, were really looking for an exit. M me in particular, um, I was feeling extremely obligated. I was obligated to my, to my team. I was obligated to my clients, my coaching members. Uh, I was obligated to the, the moderators that were inviting me into their space and in, into, in front of their audiences. And I was traveling two or three times a week into two or three different cities. And it's just a, a burnout pace um, to where I was second guessing everything, not to mention I felt like a huge hypocrite because I was teaching on these very subjects that I teach online now, but I was, um, you know, I didn't have a lifestyle to speak of, right? And the, the net outcome of everything that we share related to cash flow is, is, is that of being able to, to live life on your own terms and, and to, to essentially do what you want when you want. And I think more than any other uh, reason behind reaching out to me, that is what people describe they want. They want to be able to go wherever, whenever, stay as long as they want and be as generous or selfish in the meantime uh, <laughs> without worrying about price tags. And ultimately that was me too, but I wasn't living that life. So I was almost having this sort of contradictory experience um, and it required even more mentorship at that point um, from more than anyone else, my now fiance, Kellyanne, who was really critical of what I was doing and, and um, really exposing to me uh, because it's kind of hard to see where you're at. You know, seeing the forest through the trees sometimes is the hardest thing. Uh, and she, she called me out on it. And so uh, when, I, when I started this, um, you know, this explanation of my journey, I, I said it was kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. And that's because ultimately being able to do everything I want now continues to even further fulfill on my, my growth. And I was able to eliminate almost everything in life that I was troubled by and that I didn't care for. And I was able to expand everything that I love um, by just simply um, practicing what I teach. And so uh, cash flow is, is the name of the game. And, and that's why we're on this call here together because we, we both believe that. I know that for sure. Um, and then it's just a matter of semantically, how do, you, how do you actually write your own roadmap in order to, to accomplish that same outcome for yourself? So um, it's really only been about four years now where we've, we've spent the amount of attention that we have on our YouTube channel. And uh, you know, four years ago, we, we only had, you know, maybe five or 7,000 subscribers. We're at a little over two, 200,000. We're not a big channel by any means. We don't get the most traffic. Um, but, you know, our channel produces um, unimaginable amounts of revenues. And, um, and that's what I really like to talk with people about is, is how can you, you know, make more and spend less. And making more and spending less is, is what produces the leftover sum equaling cash flow and uh, making as much cash flow or, or generating as much cash flow as possible gives you as much freedom of choice as, as you could ever imagine. And so that's, that's hopefully what we'll elaborate on here today.
Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, if you say your 220,000 subscribers <laughs> is a small channel, I hate to ask you what you think of our little channel. <laughs> but anyways, I digress. Well, <laughs> oh, but before you say anything, I know he's dying to ask you a question, Matthew. I just, I, I have to go back to some of the nuggets that you said, um, because the, the, the real thing that we want to make sure that what Wealth Nation, that you're paying attention, what we're talking about today, when we talk about credit, we're, we're, we're not talking about consumer debt. We need to make sure that we're very, very clear. We're talking about leverage, mm -hmm. the power of leverage to create cash flow, like Matthew said. That's all we talk about here on this channel as he's affirmed. And if anything, we're just trying to share with you more opportunities for you to continue to own your own lifestyle. Leverage, leverage, leverage. Get cash flow and do whatever you need to do. And Matthew, thank you That's so exactly much for right. being super transparent and, and just sharing your journey because we can totally relate to that of us and the struggles trying to get the cash flow, trying to live the lifestyle. And and now look look at us. Good, good yeah. job, team. High five to everybody. <laughs> nice uh, job. But it's, it's just been an amazing journey. And I think that's why we resonate so much with you is because you shared so much of your journey and been so transparent that we realize that how important that is for people in our industry to just be like, hey, we don't we didn't have all the answers we struggled and we figured it out and we got some lumps along the way yeah now one thing i do want to ask you is you mentioned uh dave ramsey and robert kiyosaki which is like complete opposites <laughs> of of individuals finance people when it comes to uh their opinions about finance now yeah. we came from dave ramsey and we did the debt snowball we were going to do the debt free screen but <laughs> we uh came to a point to where we realized this was not what's going to make us successful yes so with understanding that dave ramsey has a huge following and your understanding of credit and how to best utilize it how do you go from dave ramsey to robert kiyosaki well, I actually went from Robert Kiyosaki to Dave Ramsey, oh. so I took the opposite path. Robert, Ki Robert Kiyosaki was one of my early influencers, and he, you know, he completely changed the way that I saw the power of other people's money, as he as he has done for however many millions of people at this Absolutely. point, thirty or forty million people. Um, the problem with his approach, for me personally, was as I grew. Uh, over the years, and I, I borrowed money to grow, um, I became increasingly uncomfortable with the state of my financial affairs. Mm. And, you know, whether that's right or wrong, um, you know, where Dave Ramsey actually is correct is that a lot of the time it's not a math problem. You know, there's a psychology behind all of this. Mindset. And you know, how do you quantify the value of a good night's sleep or peace of mind? Um, at the end of the day, I, I was, once I surpassed a million dollars of debt, uh, you know, that was a kind of a breaking point for me where I, I started to seek other information. And that, that was in the mid 2000s. That's when I first was familiarized with Dave Ramsey. And I really, you know, liked the passion he had for, um, you know, his, his distaste for debt, but you know, ultimately it really was a, a, a middle of the road for me that, uh, allowed me to, to really find my, my maximum trajectory mm -hmm. where I was able to really hit a pace. And, and so I've created sort of my own unique collection of philosophies, um, through the, the apprenticeships of so many other people. And, you know, I think Bruce Lee taught the same thing. It's just, you know, learn from everybody and then pick and choose the stuff that works the best for you personally. Um, and, and so that's what we did. And we created this formula for success where, you know, maximizing our ability to generate income producing assets while simultaneously minimizing and over time accelerating the elimination of, of liabilities and the expenses of life that, that we really just don't care for um, you know, that allowed for us to, to really hit this compounding effect that we call cash flow stacking. Um, and, and over the years, there's been this evolution of how that's been accomplished. And I love what, you know, I, I saw that you had Garrett on as well. I didn't watch the interview, but I'm familiar with his work and I, I love the stuff that he teaches. Um, we, we, you know, we're two peas in a pod as well. Um, <laughs> Denzel, the recent interview that you did, listen, I, I cannot say it as eloquently as these two guys are gonna be able to express it. One thing I always admired about Nelson Nash, you know, the godfather of the infinite banking concept was his ability to educate and to tell stories. 
Uh, I've, never, I've never been able to do that at the level that I wished I could. But what I can tell you is this, that while, I'm, uh, while my evolution process is taking off, um, I'm, I'm realizing areas where I'm able to prioritize my attention and my research and my development, my, my, my stress, my focus, my care. And that, prioritiz that prioritization process is really what's led to my result, my, my personal results. Um, so cash flow again is spending less, making more. The spending less component was something that I obsessed over for years and years and years. Over a decade, I obsessed over the spending less component because I was such a rebel in what I was learning from Dave Ramsey that I just refused to accept that life had to be about beans and rice. It just, it just wasn't something, something that intrigued me in any way, shape or form. I'm thinking there has to be a way that I can have my cake and eat it too. No pun intended, right? But I was more interested in the cake than the beans. And so, and so for that reason, the spending less component had restrictions. Yes. It wasn't about you know reducing my lifestyle spending. I, if I want expensive coffee or if I want to socialize, if I want weekends away, if I want to travel internationally, um, you know, I don't think I should be told no. Um, the math might suggest I should, but I don't, I don't, I still am going to resist that. Whereas future interest costs, you know, unnecessary taxes, higher insurance premiums, those are things that were obviously expenses that I was happy to do away with. And so I would pick and knit and, and just continually dig at these budgets and at these cash flow crunchers to nickel and dime hundreds and then into the thousand or two thousand or three thousand dollar per month results um every opportunity i could get Absolutely. and ultimately i finally accepted that there was a maximum capacity to that to achieve more than a couple or a few thousand dollars a month with a, a household was unusual it, it, and the higher the amount the less typical and in just the last decade, you know, my focus has been redirected to the other side of the balance sheet um, where I began to acknowledge that there was this, you know, this flaw in my thinking in that I had been operating from a bottom up approach where it started as a kid. You know, I, I started as a kid thinking that my friends whose parents were earning $100,000 a year were rich. And that was the milestone. If you were making a hundred grand, it was all about six figures, six figures, you'd made it. Um, and so when I started to dissect that, it's like, wow, that's really, you know, it's 50 bucks an hour. <laughs> Whereas you've got this, this other approach that I finally started to, to exercise my mind with, which I call the zero to Bezos scale. And as I start to look into a, a human being with the capability of generating eight or $9 million an hour, or a hundred million dollars a day on, on, on a bad month, you know, that started to really change how I, how I was thinking about earnings potential. And I began to reverse engineer from the top down. Well, what if I'm just 10% as capable or even 1% or even a 10th of 1% as capable as $9 million per hour? Yes. We're talking about $9,000, if my math serves me right. $9,000 per hour, every hour of the day, every day of the year um, is, you know, I started questioning, well, how, how is it that I could be a thousand times less capable than this other human being? And the check boxes were pretty minimal, you know? It was like, uh, you know, are there more hours in the day for him than me? No, uh, you know, is... Uh, is he more deserving of it than I am? At one time, I maybe struggled with that, but as I began to work on self-love and things that Kellyanne helped me with, there with too, I began to say, of course not, right? Is he maybe a nicer or kinder person? Not from what I've heard. I don't know him personally, but maybe not a thousand times nicer. Is he more generous than I would be if I were that wealthy? I would like to think not. I'd, I would like to think I'd be more generous. It, it, you know, is it, so it boils down to intellect and savviness from what I can tell. And intellect really has no relationship necessarily with earnings potential. I've proven that. And it then boils down mostly to savviness. And I'm going to give him all the credit in the world on that. 
but is he a thousand times savvier than I'm capable of being? I would argue no. So if, if that's true, then a $9,000 per hour earnings potential is within the realm of being realistic. And so once I started to shift my mentality on that side of the balance sheet, I started to focus my attention more on the income and the, the income producing assets that I was developing versus the how do I manipulate the way that my primary residence mortgage is, is serviced in order to prevent you know two thirds or three quarters worth of the interest costs over a five year period of time. While that's certainly fabulous and I never wanna trivialize the net results that you can accomplish by really nitpicking that side of, of our financial game plan, it, it makes up such a small piece of what I know is possible if I'm really minimizing how much I'm putting into that aspect and then maximizing how much effort and energy I have available on the, on the other side. That's so really where, that's really where the biggest transition happened for me. And you know, we invented a term 15 years ago called debt weapons which really just defines any tool that maximizes cash flow. Mm -hmm. Most often we use the term debt weapons associated with a lot of the lending instruments that we, that we are pursuing and teaching about. And I always tell people that the single most uh, powerful debt weapon that you will ever get is developing an extraordinary income. <laughs> it, it cannot be surpassed. There's no way um, for you to you know, overfund your, your cash value on your policies, uh, better than having an, an unbelievable income. There's no way for you to develop the lifestyle you want. There's no way to avoid the banks more easily. There's no way to worry about never borrowing money again or to paying off debt faster than having unimaginable amounts of revenue coming into the home. So it is my personal suggestion that people look outside of their, their focus, it, which in most cases I think is way too narrow, and really start to consider the, the countless, literally countless ways that there are to make extraordinary amounts of money today than, than ever before. So um, I, I know that was a, 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 certainly a long answer to your question, but that's, that's really how I've come to where I am today is, is looking at how to go top down. And I think that um, a combination of Kiyosaki and Ramsey was a really important piece. Of Man, that was that was the the best explanation that I've I've heard in a, a, a very long very long time. Man, because got I, me in I, tears. I, I like how you started with the mindset, oh, like the man. way you thought about your value and how you can connect that to um, other people that have the same amount of time in the day, they have the same abilities, but what's the difference? The difference is how you think. Yeah, how you apply the savviness, like you said. There were, again, so many nuggets. I'm sitting here like, thank God this is on video, so I don't have to go back and try to take these notes because, oh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I hope you picked up what Matt was putting down because this is some of the most powerful conversations that we've had because, again, if we strip money from everything, you know, all we're talking about is action, really when it comes down to it. We're talking about taking action and ownership so that you can go uh, further financially, mm -hmm. <laughs> so that you can own your own lifestyle, right? Because that, that's all we're talking about is taking action and ownership. And so with, with what Matthew was talking about again, his journey from starting with Kiyosaki, we haven't heard that yet, starting with Kiyosaki, and then learning from Dave, that's amazing. Um, ours went the other way. And, and I think we both understood that, hey, we can grab a little bit from everyone, make our own fruit salad, and, and it's gonna be uh, re really enjoyable uh, because we're gonna take what we've learned and apply what we think is best for us. No question about it. I love what you said there about consistency because uh, I, I say it as many times as I, I have an opportunity, consistency is the single most important ingredient to any of this stuff working. You guys can attest to that. Yeah. yeah. You've got 200 videos on your channel, right? <laughs> sure. And it's a slow start, but the momentum continues to grow. Mm. And I, I, I imagine I was probably right about where you are in terms of subscriber count to the efforts that I had put in. But the reason I think consistency is such a powerful conversation for your channel in general is there is no single better ingredient when it comes to your development of an infinite banking concept policy as well. I mean, you have to have the commitment or you shouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And the tools that we talk about on our channel 
one of which being the infinite banking concept, because all we're really trying to identify are as many debt weapons as possible. I don't have a dog in the race. I'm not an agent. I don't get paid. What I can tell you is it is a phenomenal tool for the right person. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of people that it's not a good fit for. Yep. Just like the concepts that I share in general are not a good fit for such a huge percentage of the population because those people are best served by someone like Dave Ramsey, who, who frankly is, is there helping the historically fiscally irresponsible people get back into a position of being consistent. What lacks with Dave's common audience is consistency. Wouldn't you agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm glad you mentioned that because that's, that's a huge takeaway from this conversation is people just have to be willing to stick with things. And unfortunately, part of human nature is that we're quitters. I, I can't even count how many times I've said I would love to learn Spanish. Yeah. You know? And <laughs> how many times do we get and fall off of diets or pick up hobbies and don't stick with them? Mm -hmm. and people wonder why they don't achieve specific levels of success. And it's because they're just not willing to put in the long-term efforts that are necessary. Uh, but I do want to encourage people to know that for those of you that are entrepreneurial, that, that have really sort of that deep bug where it's never gone away, you've probably felt it since you were young, um, that it does pay off eventually in the long run. I mean, you just have to be willing to keep going after it. And thankfully, platforms like this, channels like yours, it's the biggest cheat we could have ever hoped for. I mean, we, we think back to our years in school and it was obviously frowned upon to, you know, pay somebody 20 bucks to write your essay. <laughs> but now that's the environment we live in. We live in the environment where you can pay someone to show you exactly what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And then it's, there aren't any excuses anymore. And so uh, the one mistake I think we made is, you know, we tried to pioneer our own path. You know, that was the hardest revenue I ever generated was from VIP coaching. Now, eventually, after more than a decade of grinding, grinding, and grinding, you know, it turned into a really profitable business. But, you know, from the very beginning, it was, it was the most bizarre thing anybody had ever heard. It's like, oh, you, you know, you're suggesting that you should have a guide that's more experienced, that has been through what you're saying you want to show you how to do it less painfully and more effectively, and you want to charge for that? You out of your mind? It's like, oh, well, you know, tell me how that's different than, you know, hiring an attorney if you're sued for $200,000. But if I want to show you how to save 150,000 on your future mortgage interest, you know, it's somehow uh, outrageous. That was the style, that was the type of resistance that I had to go through because nobody had heard of it before. Now, thankfully for platforms like YouTube, this is normal. Conversations that we're bringing up today, this isn't unheard of. And, and so it makes it a lot easier. Mm -hmm. My recommendation to anybody that's out there is try not to reinvent the wheel. Yes. Uh, literally, maybe you even have an invention. One of my close friends, Dennis, helps people take ideas from their mind and bring them to market. Literally inventions. My, my recommendation for most people is get established on certain things before you go into other types of revenues that, that might pay off down the road. And that includes things like real estate. Uh, a lot of people are not fond of my opinions about real estate. I, I love real estate. I've been obsessed with it for 20 years or longer. Um, I, I invest in real estate myself, but I personally think that following the path of establishing short-term net cash flow solutions first will allow you an opportunity to really, really benefit from the long-term net worth investment opportunities that exist. Mm -hmm. And even some of the, the, the bigger uh, windfall type of income potential that you could get from something like, say, fixing and flipping real estate. I think fixing and flipping real estate can be a tremendous opportunity, but it also will wipe someone out who's not equipped to deal with a, an unpleasant flip. <laughs> and so being able to really get your core in place and do so with a very limited risk, but a very high upside potential is now easier than ever before. Mm. You, you can't even imagine what's possible with 10, 20, 30, 40, or $50,000. Oh, yeah. um, from a long-term rental standpoint, that might be one house. 
That might be two houses. That's $500 or $1,000 a month in net cash flow. Whereas if you just took it and tried to solve the short-term net cash flow equation with it, you might be able to generate five, 10, 25, 50, hundred thousand dollars per month. At which point imagine how many different policies could be funded. Mm -hmm. So my personal opinion is solve the short-term net cash flow equation and then invest in your long-term net worth assets. Um, slightly different prioritization than I started out with, but uh, most definitely the most streamlined approach I've ever taken and one that I would recommend for everybody. Right, because it came, it yeah. came from a, a place of, uh, as a part of your journey, which is really 100%. important for people to really understand when it comes to um, people that they connect with, have them share their own journeys. You're right, and uh, I'm so glad you said that the short, I feel like that there's so much I just wanna grab from this <laughs> conversation, that the short-term net cash flow uh, strategy that you're talking about is gold because we were just talking to a client about this the other day because what we what we find is sometimes people are always like real estate real estate are looking at these huge investments that they have to make and we're like you don't have any money <laughs> how are you gonna make this work that's exactly Let's get right some cash flow we gotta get some money on the table before we start doing these things so i'm just so glad that you reiterated that um but you said two things that i want you to go back and expound on um before you had mentioned cash flow stacking I want you to tell us what, what you mean by that. Tell our audience what you mean by that. And then you said a scale. You said the zero to Bezos scale. Is that what I heard? Yeah. I, I want you to expand on that for me. So cash flow stacking is the ability to accelerate the reduction and eventual elimination of liabilities while simultaneously investing in your new income and assets. And those that combination of both is what creates the, the widest gap of newfound cash flow that you can get, spending less and making more while still preserving lifestyle. Um, and that can be done in many, many different creative ways. One of the other concepts that we conceptualized and then have been experimenting with now for the past couple of years is what I call lifestyle assets. Lifestyle assets is the art of being able to create revenue streams that pay you, but that you can also use and benefit from yourself. So an example would be, for instance, the property that I'm sitting in right now is a short-term rental property. This property in a typical market, when we're not dealing with restrictions because of COVID, will bring in somewhere around the 10,000 and up range in monthly revenues while having it really only occupied somewhere around 50% of the time, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on the seasonality. And yet it happens to be located in our favorite town in the entire state of Colorado, which is one of our favorite states in the country and favorite areas in the world. So for us, you know, our ability to, to utilize that property for as often as two weeks of every month, if we choose to, has been an absolute pleasure, pleasure. And yet it still obviously generates us a considerable amount of cash flow every month too. Um, going beyond that, we now have uh, invested in a uh, recreational vehicle. You know, we've always admired these people on YouTube that are, you know, living the RV life. It looks like a blast. We don't have children. It makes it easy for us to remain geographically mobile. Yeah. And so we want to hit the road. Well, most people would consider an RV a liability. Under most traditional thinking, that's what it would be. And in our case, it's something that we're able to actually generate revenues from because uh, we're able to then rent out the properties that we would otherwise be staying in and make cash flow from it while spending substantially less than we would be on another primary residence. Um, so it's a lifestyle asset where we get to enhance lifestyle, but, um, but still find a way to increase cash flow. So that's the name of the game. Every decision that we make has an underlying question mark surrounding cash flow, um, <laughs> including the you know the Polaris that I bought. It's like a you know a side by side quad. It's arguably nothing but a liability unless it can be rented out to Airbnb guests that come and stay. They rent them for five or six hundred dollars, literally five minutes away, a five minute walk away from where we're at per day. So it's a it's a fun equation again to try and solve. Uh, that's one that we're always working towards. It has both upsides and downsides. It's not all fun. M you know, if you've ever tried to both use a, a short-term rental and rent it out, 
uh, you know, every couple of weeks, you'll realize pretty quickly that there's kind of this move in, move out process that has to happen yeah. every time. So you've got to get creative with that too. Yeah. That's not all, that's not fun, right? To have to pack up all of your toiletries and get them out of there if you have guests coming to stay. Um, so we're, we're working with little hacks and strategies within that as well and learning as we go. But again, that goes back to just my rebellious nature and saying, hey, I'm not willing to accept that I can't, you know, Eat, eat what I want and still have it after I've eaten it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, the, the, the spectrum of zero to Bezos, again, it just goes back to thinking from the, the top and then working your way backwards versus thinking about zero to $50 per hour. I wanna be thinking about the $9,000 per hour that a human being has proven, or nine million rather, per hour that a human being has proven is possible to earn. Yes. A hundred million dollars a day being possible. Does that thing, yeah, I'm not here to kid myself and, and, and try to pretend like I'm going to be creating the next Amazon. What I am here to say is that I'm capable of a lot more than I give myself credit for. And one of the final, uh, you know, major evolutions that I think I had to go through as a business owner and as somebody that, that perpetually wants to pursue potential is being able to properly set goals. Yes. And you know, after lots of research, I finally had to acknowledge to myself that my original goal setting approach was was inadequate. You know, I was somebody that would focus on realistic goals that I felt were achievable, and I think a lot of that boiled down to the, you know, the 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 disappointment factor. If I was uh missing a goal, I was let down and Therefore, I would, I would sort of reduce the, the goal uh, that I was targeting because I was more likely to, to exceed it. And of course, then um, I would have that sense of accomplishment. Whereas instead, um, you know, I've, I've really transformed that belief system over the past half dozen years where I, I really shoot for things that I would have previously considered to be completely unimaginable. <laughs> I had a mentor back in 2007 who sat me down and challenged me a little bit on this and said, um, you know, I want you to write down a number on a piece of paper of how much you want to earn per year. And I want you to put a number on there that you think is sort of a fantasy. Um, and, you know, like most people, I think I put a, mo a million bucks down and I kind of even struggled to do that. You know, I'm thinking to myself, okay, yeah, this, this is definitely a fantasy. And even at that point, I, you know, I, haven't had a year in business where I've earned less than a quarter million dollars. So it wasn't a huge stretch, right? But yet it was in my own mind. And he, he, he really gave me a hard time about it. And he's like, no, I, you don't understand. You, I want you to, to hit a, a number that you know, is, is what you would consider to be completely out of this world. So you know, I begrudgingly and purely out of peer pressure rounded the number up to five million. You know what I mean? It wasn't even it, within the realm of possibility in my own head. Um, but I did it and he wanted me to print it off and tape it to the refrigerator and the mirrors and in my car and you know, save it on my screensaver, on my computer and everything like that and just stare at it every day, which I did for multiple years. Um, if we don't generate over $5 million from just YouTube this year alone, I'm gonna be frustrated. That, that is how far along the mentality has become from 12 years ago. No. Now, I've been accused of being both a slow learner and a fast learner. I think it's really case by case. Uh, in, a lot of, in a lot of cases, I am a slow learner and it doesn't have to take 12 years to adopt a lot of these types of concepts into your own mind. And if I can be a bridge for that gap for many people, then that's great. That's why I like to have a channel and be able to teach my, my beliefs and um, share my experiences because I, I want to cut that down. And I tell everybody I have an opportunity to who believes that they are an entrepreneur deep down that if they're not making a million dollars or more per year within 10 years or less, that it's entirely because of the commitment factor. It's entirely because of the consistency issue. And again, imagine all of the different areas that you can focus on once you hit those types of levels and you don't even have to be good at it. I don't even have to be good at real estate at this stage of my career for real estate to inevitably pay off for me. I don't have to look at APYs and split one or two percents here or there. I can have tenants that disappoint me. I can have 
uh, repairs that can unexpectedly pop up. And it's nothing more than just sort of a nuisance because I can buy the properties with large down payments. I can accelerate the payoff of them, not even in years, but in months yep. to where now I just maintain a portfolio of free and clear real estate. And it, it's created lifelong wealth. The same thing with the infinite banking concept. It's the same type of thing. If figure out where you want to invest. And once you, you're figuring out those short-term net cash flow solutions, you don't even have to be, the, the rest takes care of itself. It's easy. It's so true. Gosh, it, it just, it, it's again, reaffirming everything that we talk about, everything that Darius and I have conversations about and, and really the realizations of you are capable of accomplishing anything that you can put your mind to. Mm -hmm. And we have a check that we stare at, I'm, I'm pointing at it right here, uh, every single day, because like you said, there's certain goals that you put in place and it's those, those hairy audacious goals that you don't necessarily think that you can accomplish, but we've been able to exactly. accomplish every single one of those checks that we've written to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful thing no to have that visual visualization and to, to have it uh, manifest itself. Yeah, absolutely. And one thing exactly. that I got from, from the conversation that you had with us and your experience of the 5 million is we have um, set goals for ourselves that we're high, but they can be a lot higher. Yeah, we have, we're we're rolling up our sleeves. We're 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 gonna put another uh, another digit on that check that we got going on there. Um, That's awesome. And guys, I mean, look, you could miss by fifty percent, and you'll still achieve numbers that are so substantially larger than what you would have hit if you had only missed your meager goal by ten percent. Mm -hmm. like and that that was what finally registered with me. When I, when I was listening to people talking about the options of goal setting, shout out to Brendan Bouchard, you know, I mean, he was yes. one of those mentors that really helped challenge my perspective about goal setting. And, and I think people just shoot too small. Again, that's the bottom up versus top down yes. approach. Yes. Go top down, you know, why not shoot for a hundred million dollars? And if you miss by 90%, you're probably not going to be too upset about it. Not, not at, at all. all. <laughs> they say shoot for the shoot for the moon. If you miss, you still land amongst the stars. And that's exactly it for every facet of life. So, so thank you for, for just uh, reaffirming the cash flow stacking and also the, the zero to be Bezos solution. I just think it's important for, for people to really understand um, that these nuggets that you're putting out there because like, we haven't even mentioned a ton about infinite banking today. It's, it's more so just principles and philosophies that we're just trying to get everyone to understand and to share because in this day and age, especially when we all may be restricted in a certain way, mm -hmm. I think Matthew hit on this uh, about creativity yeah. and, and, and leverage and utilizing the things that you have around you that are assets that maybe we're just not used to thinking of in that way. Right. Um, you know, you said your, your house is an asset, the, the quad is an asset, we're cars, well, whatever it is these days, all we have to do is look around us. Mm -hmm. There is literally money everywhere around us and it's just all about being creative and creating opportunities to generate cash flow for you. Right. That's exactly right. And what better way to invest into the strategies like infinite banking than with this surplus of cash flow? I mean, it's one of the, the primary ingredients required is you've got to have not just the consistency aspect, but the, but the cash flow to support it. So um, these principles feed right into what you guys teach. And I love the tool. I think it's fabulous if you're a good fit for it. Um, if you're healthy and you have cash flow, you should be exploring it. Absolutely. And you made a good point earlier where you're talking about it's good, not, not necessarily for everyone. And that's something that we explore all the time is you got to have the money to maintain it. Like we talk about consistency and action mm -hmm. where we need to make sure that, that you're ready to get started and, and to, to actually do banking. So if you are interested in banking, click on the link below to become our client, but really cash flow, cash flow, cash flow is the name of the game, ladies and gentlemen. And we wanted to bring Matthew on board to just talk about some of his philosophies and for him to share his nuggets uh, of wisdom because as we're all out here in this financial game, we got to take from, from, from everything that we're learning and build that fruit salad, like we said, so that we can generate wealth and create cash flow for our own families. Yeah, and one thing that I really, really hope everyone got from this interview with uh, Matthew is the fact that you are capable of so much more. Yes. You're, everyone is capable of so much more if you use your mind and that creativity and the, the, the wits and the, 
the the gusto the gusto <laughs> that God gave you in order to be creative like Carmen and Matthew said be creative that's the only thing holding you back from where you are from where you want to be exactly so thank you all wealth nation for hanging out with us and thank you thank you thank you Matthew for your thank time you. please let us know how thank our audience all. can find you sir Absolutely. So one resource I'd love to give away to everybody if they need it. You may have a great budgeting tool that you provide for them already anyway, but a free resource that they can rely on is called the Cashflow Cruncher. It's a spreadsheet that we developed years and years ago. Still to this day, one of the primary tools that helps me achieve what I do. You can get that at cashflowcruncher.com. Like I said, no strings attached. Uh, you can also go to freecoachingcalendar.com. We give away one complimentary one hour conversation uh, to friends like you um, and your audiences. Uh, there it tends to be a wait for these. We try to manage the schedule very closely, uh, but it is something that I'm committed to doing and it is what makes my day every day. I look forward to every conversation that I have and I have now for a long time. Until that changes, I'm gonna keep doing them. So go ahead and schedule a free call, freecoachingcalendar.com. And guys, last thing I wanna say is if I can do it, anybody can do it. It's not any surprise to me that the other guests I've seen you have on your channel are successful. They are powerhouse minds, even Denzel, who's 24 years old, blows me away with how quickly he, he picks up on these concepts. I, on the other hand, like to consider myself to be a very ordinary and intellectually challenged individual. I, I dropped out of college. I'm the type of person that people who doubt themselves should be able to look to and say, if he can do it, I can do it too. So stay encouraged out there, guys. Stay consistent with it. Rely on the biggest cheat that you have, like, Carmen and Darius's YouTube channel here and YouTube as a platform as a whole. And certainly visit us on our channel as well, VIP Financial Ed. Awesome, thank you so much. And uh, I know well, we're gonna leave you with some things that Matthew talks about, which is always about going further, faster, financially. And like we always say, ladies and gentlemen, make sure that you own your own lifestyle. Or someone else will.